Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cat Tim Show. Today, my guest is comedian, good buddy from D.C., uh, Haywood Turnipsey Jr. Did you say hi, Haywood? Hi, Haywood. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have the best voice of all time. Oh, Doesn't thank he have you. the best voice of all time, Coley? It's very soothing. <laughs> <laughs> very soothing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, right? Don't you just feel like you should be, you should be like a, I don't know, something on the radio? Hey, <laughs> listen in. Every, t- every time you talk, I just expect some incredibly sensual jams to uh, come out smooth afterwards. Smooth jam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big up, big up. <laughs> yeah. I met Haywood in D.C. I just like walked up to him after I had too much to drink. It's <laughs> a good way to put it. I had too much to drink, and I was like, "You're gonna be my best friend." My bestie. She molested me, Cole. <laughs> I, I believe that a thousand percent. Like, it was this little bitty like, like a Caucasian woman. Like I walked in, and she was like, "Hey, you." <laughs> and like she grabbed me by the shoulders <laughs> and I was like what <laughs> she was like you're gonna be my bestie <laughs> and I was like bestie what <laughs> she was like friendy I was like okay and she was wearing shoulder pads and I was like your shoulders are like as high as mine <laughs> right that's true I forgot I used to wear shoulder pads <laughs> the things that I used yeah. to like, I mean I just look drastically different <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you do you, you knew me before the glasses. Before the, before the glasses, yeah. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. There was a before the glasses? This is news to me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she didn't wear them often. She wore them, but only like when we were riding and she was reading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, like we would ride the shows and Kat would like pull out her laptop at the time. She pulled out her laptop or whatever. She was reading, writing, and be like, boom, 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 glasses. I'm like, oh, what happened to my friend? <laughs> <laughs> where'd my bestie go? Yeah, where'd my bestie go? She was like, hey, dude, this is me. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is me now. This is us. <laughs> we were the beginning of that TV show. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Timon and Pumbaa. Timon, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I also wonder if you guys, you, uh, you, got, you guys be friends. I wonder which one, who do you think, I don't know, I'm trying to decide who smokes more weed, you or Coley? <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't been smoking like I used to the past few months, so I, I can't really be held in any of these conversations at the moment. Why is that? Yeah, what's wrong, Cole? I, I really don't like <laughs> when I was moving. When I was moving to New York, I had to stop so I could like save money oh, so yeah, I could yeah, get yeah. here. I understand. And then when I got back into it, it just wasn't the same as it was pre. Like I was a daily smoker, heavy yeah. smoker. And hey, then hey, hey. When I took that such strong of a stop, like I don't know, my body, yeah, my yeah. body just like reset. Well, it's, the thing about marijuana is when it's not people. When you stop, you just stop. There's no, right. you know, it's, it's one of those things. Like, hey, when you start back, hey, you start back. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It's you just, it's, it's just, for me, it's a relaxer. Oh, yeah. I have sleep apnea. I have a card to prove this, people who are listening. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that you would have terrible sleep apnea. You're snoring. Oh, dude, you hear my voice, right? And then now I got this, uh, I've been having a cold for, because I went and had a um, sleep study, so I could get a new machine. And they gave me some other machines and whatnot to help clear mucus or whatever. So as you hear, it sounds like I have a cold, but I always sound this way. And now all the different things are draining, and um, the, the uh, smoke helps dry that up. So the doctor's good. I just re-upped from a card again. Hey, DC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the only reason I haven't moved to New York City yet. It's like, oh, yeah, they're they, way behind the times. When, yeah. they, when they get on board. I mean, they're brutal about it here. I know. Stop and frisk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess you, you wonder why I'm late. <laughs> it's your big Jamaican looking ass over here. Come here, you. And then I'm like a you know a liberal in DC. I'm like, hey, this is not right. You in New York now, buddy. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I was stopped five times on my way over. Oh my gosh, <laughs> between Brooklyn and here, what? <laughs> yeah, and you have uh, you know, you're you're a family man. He's your your dad. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, you know what? You need to know this. We got one on the way. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, we have one on the way. Oh my She'll be here in April. We made her cat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know Tracy loves you. We may name her Cat. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so we have two. Uh, we have three boys uh, total. One, Aaron, twenty, one, three, one, five years old. We, you know, black folks, you know, we, just <laughs> 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 we start early. Then we was like, hey, let's, let's give it a break and then proceed. And then uh, now we have a baby girl on the way. So oh, we'll you're gonna have a girl. Yeah, and she's probably excited about the, that. Yeah. Oh, this is <laughs> it. She's she, she stole my steam. <laughs> she stole it from me, cat. She stole it from me. She was like, I need that girl right now. I was like, okay, I guess so. That's great. Well, I mean, you've lived a, a very uh, 
fascinating life, obviously. You've, you yeah, know, yeah. okay. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> I don't even know where to say. I mean, it's not over yet, I hope. <laughs> you got, you've got some of the, the, some of the NBA stories that you have. <laughs> probably, probably some of the best. I don't even know where to start. I mean, just talk, you know? Yeah, yeah uh, big sports fan. So, you know, we, uh, especially when, um, you know, DC. <clears throat> the beauty of it is everybody comes through. So there was a time when a buddy of mine, a good buddy, he had floor seats for the Wizards. Mm-hmm. So we would sit there and just talk to everybody. <laughs> and like, you know, Paul Pierce, uh, 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 Sean Kemp, Gary Payton. So there was a time when they had the All-Star game in D.C. And we're hanging out with all the VIPs and um, just chill, chillaxing, as they say. So uh, a couple guys from D.C., approach Gary Payton and they're like, hey man, um, you know, I know you ball for real in the <laughs> NBA, but you haven't seen DC ball. So Gary Payton is like, hey, can we be, can I use language? Oh yeah. Yes. So he's like, fuck DC ball. <laughs> 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 so DC, I mean, DC's home to a few, quite a few ballers. Oh yeah, Durant. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I mean, Slim, you know, he's, he's nice. So that being said, uh, they were like, okay, we'll get you out there. So Gary Payton is like, I will spend my NBA check <laughs> on whatever it is you smoke <laughs> that I will take you out in church shoes. So we're like, okay, Gary Payton ain't going in church shoes. Lo and behold, Gary Payton gets in the limousine. He's like, we're going to find a court in church shoes, and I'm going to dunk on all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my buddy, we're like, ah, oh, we sicing it up. He's like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Oh, no, it happens. And well, Gary Payton's like, there's a court. We find a court. He goes out there, I have a ball. He's like, I'm the glove. Of course I have a ball. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of dribbles and uh, he didn't dunk on the dudes, but it was enough to be like, you know what? This is this is what we call a massacre in the making. <laughs> Let's just stop now. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a GP, man. Fun dude. Fun dude. That's what I like about NBA athletes. They're really like they're like us, you know, cool cat. Most athletes, you know, most most yeah. entertainers or you know, in that, those fields, they're just dudes that are hanging out, especially in that age bracket between 20 and 35 years old just a bunch of cats with money who got nothing else to do yeah. so you're hanging out with uh them and then it's us like it folks and computer guys and then um all at the clubs at the same places with you know trying to talk to the same girls and whatnot so that's why they all got the same baby mamas <laughs> <laughs> it's true yeah. <laughs> it's true like durant might be one of the wisest he actually you know st- stayed away because he it was talking of him coming back to the wizards but uh as we see he went to go to state in there ridiculous didn't now. even take a meeting <laughs> right. didn't even take a meeting like, with the no. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to nobody wants to like where are you from originally boston boston okay cool so and you moved to new york for work yeah in august ah, big up so um if, as work grows and gets better you may you go to boston to visit and go back home yeah, yeah, yeah. but unless the opportunity really really presents itself do you really go back home to maybe win or do you go back home to actually win right so that's the, the that was the durant dilemma as i as i saw it i was like yo the guy has to go somewhere where he can – he's one of those names that have to win a championship For or sure. he'll go down like Barkley or Sean Kemp and people who were great but, you know, not in that pantheon. For sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So now he's immediately mentioned with, uh, you know, Christmas Day. That game was insane. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that game was insane. And he's a cool dude. He plays in the uh, Goodman – he had the Goodman League. Nike has these – um. You know, they had a ball camp, summer camps to come down, and D.C. is one of the places they do right up the street from where we live at. So we get to go see them over there all the time. And I used to play football in college, so I know a few ball players and stuff. My brother played arena ball, so it's just heavy. Into, we all play sports. Yeah, we still know yeah, sports yeah. folks, you know. I had cousin coach for the Pirates. Um, so it was just all around. You're just dude. talking about like the, like this like it's normal, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, he played for the Pirates, and then he wanted to be a coach for the Pirates. And we were living in Pittsburgh, so, you know, we get his tickets to the games. That's where the Steelers fan yeah. comes in? That's exactly where Steelers – because I'm, I'm from Gary, Indiana, originally. Oh, um, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to lead with, I'm from Gary, Indiana. Yeah. So yeah, I, I come st- at you with a way more respectful <laughs> tone. Yeah. For people who don't know Gary, yeah. Indiana, I mean – Yeah, one of those times, about man. Freddie Gibbs is – Freddie yeah, Gibbs, fine, exactly. Yeah. Eastside Gangster Nation. <laughs> <laughs> ESGN. So we would um be but it's uh we were heavy. We were just that was just one of the things that we did. I uh, went to high school with Glenn Robinson. Before uh, I lived in Gary till I was sixteen, then I moved to Pittsburgh. Um I said that to say Gary's a steel mill town. Mm. On the steel mills, they had the Steelers logo all the time. Bethlehem Steel, they were affiliated. That was like the first rain slicker that I actually had was a Steelers slicker. My dad looked like Mean Joe Green. And at the time, that commercial was the hottest thing, oh, him giving the kid the Coke. So I used to be like, that's my dad. I, I, I didn't know my dad was in jail, so it didn't matter. 
He did give me a Coke, but it wasn't the same. Wacko, wacko, wacko. I said that to say, um, uh, so my mom knew Glenn's mom. He and I went to high school together. Uh, so at that time, he was number one recruit. Oh, yeah. You know, so we, I got to see a recruiting process. Uh, uh, Shashevsky, Tarkanian, Deed Smell, Bobby Knight, all these guys came to the school. So it was kind of normal for where we were because yeah. of who we were with. And then when he got drafted, we uh, we would go back and work his camp uh, from time to time. My brothers and sister attended. I would just work it and, you know, help out here and there. Uh, so these are all athletes, yeah. you know, yeah. like, like the professional athletes, and it's uh, it's not that it's normal; it's just that it's kind of normal, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm still stuck on how I would ever handle like being a baby mama of many of a man. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta, you gotta, like they say in Brooklyn, you gotta either gotta slang crack, crack rock, or you got a wicked jump shot. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. I just be. I just go crazy. I just be like camped out outside of all their houses. Not, all the not time. if you're getting paid. That's true. Not I've never had paid. that. Not if you not if you're getting paid to be a baby mama. That's the difference. That's true. Have you watched that show Wags, Wives and Girlfriends of Athletes? No. Some superstar athletes? No. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're like, yo, this is this is upkeep. Like I have to I have to do this because I have to worry about the young chicks coming in, trying yeah. to take my man. And I already know he's, you know, on the road all the time. So I have to, you know, when he comes home, I gotta be the shit and all yeah. that good stuff. So it's like, wow, that is a profession being a a, a, a spouse yeah, of an athlete like that. You have to get ready all the time, like I do for work, probably. Huh. You can't never look bad. Ain't no, you, tracks and everything. <laughs> yeah, I say, at least I get to take my tracks out before I go to sleep. <laughs> Not them. <laughs> Not them. <laughs> they got to have it in. It's crazy. Because they have to look like they look. That's crazy. Which is wild, man. That's, uh, that's insane. Like, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Doug Christie, his wife. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. She how she would she would follow the team because she was always worried about him, you know, dating, or being around, and all that kind of stuff. It's just weird, you know. You, you deal with. Um, I think I think it was just with athletes. You deal with people just like the Olympics. You hear about it at the Olympics, it become you know these these villages become just these these uh, orgies or exactly okay. these brothels or whatnot. Because you have all these high intense. I mean, all they do is train, 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 train. So then by the time they get to where they got to get to you meet somebody else. first of all you're in the best shape of your life right if whether you like mark henry big fat guy or whether you're like uh, uh serena williams or something like that you know or, or one of the little um gymnasts yeah. whatever you are you're still in, you're in the best shape of your life so you have that you have all these they say more olympic babies are like conceived during the olympics than outside yeah. of the olympics because these people just get together and just start yeah you, I mean, look at Andrew Wiggins, both, yeah. both his parents are Olympians. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it's insane, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and you feel <laughs> so good about you. You got to feel good about yourself. What? You be pretty confident. Yeah, being either you just, like, won a gold medal and you're trying to celebrate, or you just lost and you it, need to pick yeah, me up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. You're right. By the way, you're there in a foreign country with somebody else who's in a foreign country doing, it's like, you know, Greek, Greek gods and goddesses, you know what I mean? So you're like, oh, my gosh, these are the best of the best? Pfft. Yeah. What are you going to do, man? Yeah, pretty much that. Just kind of <laughs> orgy, pretty much, orgy. Pretty much just have a big Olympic orgy. Uh, Michael Phelps it up, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people, it's funny when people, he still gets shit for what, the, the weed and like the DUI and all that. I mean, didn't yeah. he get a DUI or something? I think he did get a DUI. I know he got the, the, the herb, they called him, you know, they called him smoking, had him bong when he was in China mm -hmm. or whatever. But I just found out through the grapevine that the Olympics have stopped testing for marijuana because mm. that's a, it's a recovery tool for most athletes. Yeah. You know, it's how you get back into, which is, you know, we, we joke about marijuana, but it's one of those things that medicinally it has been proven to help much more than it has been proven to hurt. Yeah. Right. You know, like anything else in this world, it could hurt some, it could help some. Right. It's one of those things that I think should, it should be, you know, uh, more than just... Uh, marginalized and, and medicinalized it should also be legalized you of know? course especially when you're talking about adults absolutely you know, of course the stress of the world today how many more people would be cool in dc <laughs> how many people do we know yeah i know <laughs> so many people working on the hill like <laughs> you, you freak out absolutely i mean i i was in uh I, I did a comedy show one time and everyone was smoking and i i could never smoke and go on stage i don't mm -hmm. know how people do it yeah but there was somebody there that was like a uh, new and like worked on the hill and they were freaking out about getting a contact high. <laughs> this is a grown adult. Yeah. yeah. They were angry. Yeah. They were yeah. very angry. They're like, I could, you know, I I'm tested for it. my job and I'm going to get, I'm yeah. like, you're not going to, you're, you're fine. Yeah. You're not going to get a con. That's not like a real thing. Yeah. Unless, you yeah. know, you're just. Well, sometimes if you hot box. If you hot box. But, you know, hey, man, just enjoy yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Sweat it out. It's <laughs> a, the contact high. Or, or like, you know, when they talk about, um, whenever they show weed on like, 
movies or TV, people are like seeing things and like hallucinating. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's like yeah. acid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, like, that is not mushrooms. Like, no, no. <laughs> mescaline's different. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Either you're going to be like, okay, I could go about my day. Someone like, let's just take someone in my family. My mom has ailments and they help her with her ailments so she can move around. It's nothing about getting high. It's about mm-hmm. being able to, to move body-wise. It's like, you take the cannabinoids and you put them in, like I know oh, another older lady, she uh, creates oils and cooks with it and whatnot and it aids her arthritis then you have someone who let's say they can't sleep you yeah. know and okay oh because of all the medications like i know people in the military who have had ptsd who yeah. have now been uh, thanks to dc being uh le- well legalized it's, well partially legalized and medicinalized they can uh apply for their car get their card and not take so many pills because they need to go to sleep some of those yeah. things just keep them awake and i'm like and as i hear these stories i'm like well these are the stories that that I mean, of course, you have uh, 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 Harold and Kumar stories. Yeah, those are the fun stories. Yeah. You know, right. to tell. like, hey, I guess I went to White Castle and then went to jail and <laughs> no Patrick Harris. Yeah, but it was like there was something in that. <laughs> Some, there's not just herb. Right, absolutely. <clears throat> herb is of the earth and it's it's good. You know, well, it's, herb, it's for you. Yeah, well, it, the, the whole I mean, with the presidential run with Gary Johnson, he was I mean, he made a lot of horrible mistakes with the answers to questions <laughs> on television. But he's someone I know and I like personally. And the amount of a, he was attacked for just being yeah. like, yeah, he, yeah, I have he had these lozenges that he created his own company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, yeah. people don't even understand like the difference between like indica and sativa. Yeah, <laughs> like he's yeah. not sitting in, like he's he's like I do one of and I clean my apartment. Yeah, and, and he does talk goofy. He's like I do the sativa, you know. Clean so TV yeah. lodge and I can clean my apartment and it's like so what's the problem he hasn't well, drank in to, decades that like. was supposed to harp on him about so that they wouldn't be taken seriously right which is one of those things that you know it, it's that's the it's weird because that's still the stigma with uh, uh, recreational usage of things people go okay the stigma is it's still uh, reefer madness that's yeah. what people still see and then people that I know who uh, uh, I actually didn't partake of, of, of herb until I was older, until I, until I was over 20 years old. Mm-hmm. So I know friends who had done it throughout through high school who now will say that's not the thing to do. But when they were in high school, of course it was the thing to do. And I'm like, well, now you're just, you're just kind of falling into that rut of this is how someone like Trump's get elected mm-hmm. because you're just falling into, well, this is what it's supposed to be. We're like, no, change is... It's here. It's imminent. It's going to happen. It's done. You can either be a part of it or you can get rolled over with it, which is, you know, <clears throat> people that think that way are not ancient. You have more and more, um, uh, uh, not just, just states within the United States, but more countries that are uh, uh, loosening their regulations on marijuana and loosening their uh, 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 just mental chains and strings that they have about it. It's just, it's not one of those things that is like, okay, like pornography back in the day, right. we used to come in a, a brown bag in your in your, uh, in your your mailbox. Mm. And then, let's be honest, thanks to the internet, I mean, thanks, the, pornography is why the internet is where it is now. It's like, oh, I don't have to worry about hiding that anymore. I can go to this little place on the internet. So now you have the internet and people go, we want it faster. So it goes, okay, now we want it, streaming is directly related to pornography. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. We have to thank Pornhub for Netflix. Yeah. You know? So I, it's one of those things where we go, okay, drugs in and of itself can be bad. However, if, uh, 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 and there's some that should be off the market, as they say. There are some that should be because they cause harm to people. Crack right. in and of itself. <laughs> it's just be what it does. It doesn't help crack. anyone. No one's ever been like, you know what? I smoked crack and it worked out pretty well for me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My life has been grand. I kept that job. I met her <laughs> or him. <Yeah. laughs> I'm still his baby mom. <laughs> yeah. We've had no issues whatsoever. Yeah, you know. So um, it's one of those things where it's just like the actual approach, instead of America ha- has so long gone with the blanket approach to things, it, it now needs to, and it's starting to do that, individualize and itemize, just like we do on our taxes. Let's say, hey, let's look at this for what it is, study it and go, yeah, your name. And that's as a group, you know, and yeah. as a group, you have Hawaii, uh, California, D.C., Alaska, uh, Wyoming, um, Washington State. That are all said, okay, you know, this is not just medicinal, but recreational. Yeah, like, why not? You know, like, adults should be able to get together, just like they smoke cigars and drink whiskey. Right. Smoke and drink water. I mean, the things I've been able <laughs> to do 
because I drank too much whiskey that have destroyed my life. You hear our voices, right? Well, I know, I know, exactly. I'm like, hey. That's what whiskey does to you. Um, and then psychedelics, too. I mean, yeah. there's so many benefits of, like, psychedelics. People have been really helped that have been depressed or yeah. bi- have bipolar disorder. Yes. And people, you know, say, no, yes. you can't do that. But then people take Zoloft and they, like, kill themselves. Exactly. Well, Big Pharma, you know, exactly. you know Big Pharma has their hands and everything. And they go, well, this is... And that's a part of it. Uh, uh, Trump is right about that. You have the, uh, what do you call those people that, uh, lobbyists, Mm -hmm. you know, they're the ones who run it. But if they say it's bad, it's bad. They get a politician to co-sign on it, and that's what it is. Zoloft is one of those things that is addictive. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. And it's mind-changing. Yeah. And and when you have that, you go, okay, so how is that any better Mm -hmm. than a mushroom? (laughs) <laughs> with children that grew wild. Well, how's yeah. that any different than peyote? Yeah. Or, 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 or any other... Uh, Ayahuasca. Yeah, mm-hmm. all those hallucinogens or, or the stuff that... What's the stuff they do down in um Peru and whatnot? That's ayahuasca. Yeah, that's ayahuasca. Oh, that's ayahuasca. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. That's the stuff that... Uh, I saw the DMT? Yeah, DMT. Yeah, yeah ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah, and plus in terms of even... Think about recreational LSD. Nobody's getting addicted to acid. Like, and a lot of other right. drugs, you can get all coked out and go to work. You take, you drop a, <laughs> you drop a bunch of acid. And you go to the office. People are gonna be like, something's going on. <laughs> we're sitting there like, what? Why are we all here? Yeah, what is man. the real meaning of what we're doing? And what they'll be like, day two or three of that, you're gone. <laughs> you, you can't show up to work on a, a ton of LSD. I mean, maybe here people would be like, "Let's let's go on Facebook Live." Yeah, <laughs> I got here, messages to to say to, yeah, the, they, to the people. Yeah, they that, that probably that, that's got to be where video games come from. I'm sorry, I mean, when I play games like Zelda, any, any kids show, like mm-hmm. any kids show. When you it's like, oh, there's a lot of talking animals here. Talk about <laughs> it. Yeah. Sesame Street, I don't give a damn what you say. When you decide, I'm going to put my hand in a sock and teach kids the alphabet. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and true. not just the alphabet, but also teach them. If you look at Sesame Street, it also teaches you how to watch television because they have commercials within the show. You know, they have yeah. sketches and then they have commercials. And it's a little bit of consumerism there, but it's healthy consumerism and the fact that these are things that can help you. So uh, you go, Frank Oz who is the voice of so so many different, like, uh, Oscar and, 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 uh, 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 uh was it Oscar? And, Elmo, uh, Elmo, Big Bird. All of these, these things, you go, well, how, do, how, do, how do you come up with that stuff? Oh, we tripped out one day and decided we weren't getting gigs in New York as actors and comics. Next thing you know, we created a PBS show. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. That's not drugs, but that's psychedelic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you're... I've never heard anyone be like, I just took so I mean, I'm sure it happens because anybody oh, yeah. can be affected, like you said, even negatively by Zoloft. But I've never heard anybody be like, I took so much acid and it ruined my life. <laughs> I mean, a couple instances it affects people negatively, but so does any drug. Well, you have to stop at some point. Yeah, you can't just be taking acid all day. <laughs> I mean, you know, the body just won't allow it for so much. No, yeah, well, it won't affect you as much anymore. But Exactly. And then Haywood, yeah, you're a big fan of Sesame Street. Huge I mean, fan of Sesame Street. I still think it's one of the best shows on television. <laughs> How many hours of Sesame Street would you say you've watched? Oh, throughout life? <laughs> I still watch it. The kids don't watch it so much anymore. <laughs> they're five and three, so they're only like Yo Gabba Gabba and yeah. Power Rangers. And I'm like, you guys want to watch this Elmo episode? It's like teaching you how to share. Yeah. Like, Fuck. <laughs> 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 so I still watch it because of the, uh, just, it, there is always, there's something the other day. <clears throat> not too long ago Ice Cube was on there and he was using the word astounding and quite honestly I was astounded that Ice Cube is on Sesame Street I mean this is the guy I grew up with I mean he literally at one point called himself the nigga you love to hate because of who he was and his political stance and how he was coming out and now he is a he's standing next to Elmo <laughs> explaining why his name is Ice Cube <laughs> <laughs> and then they turned into an Ice Cube and he was like oh you're so cool and I'm listening to the play on words so you learn like the different meanings of things and how words can have these layers and levels. And that to me helps one with life. I think a lot of the lessons that we learn on the street <laughs> <laughs> can be used on the streets. You know, it's just like just take it from here to there. Somebody like Big Bird, back in the day when Mr. Snuffleupagus was a character <laughs> that he only saw. I thought Big Bird was like my uncle who used to see characters who was on drugs. I was like, Big Bird was that guy on the block who, you might might have been a singer or an entertainer or whatever, did a little bit too much drugs and came back home and never left. Yeah. And now he sees a big purple elephant. (laughs) You're like, hey. But he's still cool, though. (laughs) (laughs) And you can learn from him, right? Yeah. So that's sort of those um, 
being from Gary, that's one of those things that you can learn from everybody. You learn from the, 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 the people who have used drugs, not to use drugs. Mm-hmm. Those are the people that kept me away from it. Like, you don't ever want to do this, young blood. Like, wow, mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. You <laughs> you look, that's, that's your high school picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? So I've never, I've never been... Um, afraid of it you know it's always been I, I joke about it but it's one of those things that's always been around good bad or indifferent i've seen the pains i've seen the things that go wrong and i've seen people uh again like i said i've seen people use things to do things to help get themselves better mm-hmm. so you know i don't uh, it's, uh, to me it's all about the individual and how that individual approaches things yeah. and life and then in that you will find who you are and how to utilize things i don't drink you know i drink whiskey when i do drink i don't like beer so much i like ciders i don't like beer because it makes me fat mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the wheat yeah people who do like beer i don't knock them for n- liking beer right so why knock the herb user for liking herb or yeah. why knock the the, the the guy who likes shrooms or whatever it is, yeah. you know what i mean i don't even knock the occasional guy i know i know people who functionally use cocaine yeah me too I mean, this is New York. I, I, I call the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, personally, like in high school and even before that, I used to get crippling migraines like, mm. daily, yeah. daily. And freshman year of college, I still would get them. Yeah. And sophomore year, I started doing Molly wow. very often. Yeah. And <laughs> about three, four years after that, I was like, I, I don't even know why I thought about it. I was like, man, I haven't had a migraine in forever. <laughs> yeah. And I was talking wow. to someone. He was like, because uh, he, he knew my drug history. He right. was like, it was probably all the Molly. He was like, I know someone who, of all these stories always go, I know someone. Yeah. This yeah. guy actually believed. He was like, I know someone who the government actually prescribes him MDMA because of how severe. <sighs> like, he can't function. It's just right. constant pain unless he's right. taking MDMA. So I was like, holy shit. Everyone told me it was going to put holes in my brain. Right, instead, right, right. Instead, right. it cured, cured me. It filled, it filled those holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's it, man. That's it. You know, no, you know, no two, it's like snowflakes. No two things are alike. Right. So why even try to blanket it and say, I mean, and that's just, we know why. You have the, you know, the the, the first uh, uh, czar of, of, or whoever, was the guy who they put in charge of drugs at the time, he just didn't like what he was saying when he came to marijuana. Uh yeah. We talking about during the reef of madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to lock up black people. Yeah, he just didn't like what he saw. Black people in Mexico. He knew, well, it funny, was, funny how we come right back to that. It was, <laughs> it was truly he he played off of white fear by yeah. using um, black people, yeah. saying they were raping all the white women. Yeah. And and the weed. In reality, yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't even the weed. It was it was the. Um, the paper, the, what, the hemp. It was the yeah, hemp yeah. because the newspaper industry yeah. knew that that was going to be their biggest competitor. It's yeah. better for the earth. It grows faster. Yeah. There was no way the timber industry was going to be able to compete with it. So they yeah. were like, let's outlaw all of it and let's use yeah. white fear as the way to get. Because if you just come out and you're like, hey, I'm a rich white guy. I'd like to stay a rich white guy. <laughs> yeah. So can we make that illegal? Everybody, everybody like, shut yeah. the fuck up, dude. Like, no, right. we just want a war because of hemp. Like, right. we, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We need this shit. Exactly. They make uniforms out of it. You yeah, know, they make you, uniforms. You revolutionary war up to World War II. I'm mistaken. Yeah, well, uniform? they brought it back. Ah, okay. Uh, because of that, because we were running out of materials. Yeah. So we needed ship sails. We yeah. needed parachutes. We needed yeah. all sorts of fucking shit. Yeah. So we were like, well, we need to grow it fast, and we need something that's strong. Yeah. We need so, like rope, everything. Yeah. So they were like, yeah, yeah, let's get hemp back. Yeah. And then right back, they were like, oh yeah, but again, black people. We yeah. got people smoking <laughs> their uniforms. <Funny>. Yeah. <laughs> Look what those Mexicans are doing. Build yeah. that wall. This is the first time we've heard this. We've been here before, America. <laughs> sure have. We've been here before. We'll get back. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about? I mean, I know you, you, your military. You did, you did like NSA related stuff too, right? Like, uh, that was in the Air Force. In the Air Force, yeah, some stuff I can't talk about. No, I know you can't. <laughs> yeah, no, I was a telecom guy, so yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. And they are spying on us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a given. <laughs> but it's not that they're spying on us. We give them our information as soon as you, we, you, okay. Here's the thing: you buy a phone. Yeah. You put your name in the phone. Mm-hmm. You put now we put your life information in the phone. My phone knows. Everything. It's just that simple. Yeah. yeah, I have no problem with it, to be it's completely just, honest. It's just that simple. So. I don't do anything big enough where I'm exactly. like some huge target. And the average person does not. The person who, <clears throat> the questions are, yeah, you see it in the movies all the time. They have no web history. They have no, you go, know, well, that's odd yeah. for this day and age. You yeah. know, like, well, that person never even been to a library. Oh, that's odd for this day and age because we've all learned, we all learned growing up to go to the library and do a decimal card system and card yeah. catalog and all that. So they've been... As, as a good friend of my states, every American citizen has an FBI record. It's mm-hmm. whether or not it has to be enacted as far as, well, who is this person once they start going, do, 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 or when something happens. So if something happens and one of us are involved, they go, okay, let's pull the file on Haywood. 
Does this fit his track record? Da, 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 da. Either it does or it doesn't. You know, I'm, I don't get into the lone gunman stuff or anything like that. But as far as the information that is gathered now is information that we freely give up because it's free. It's the Free Information Act. You know, we want that information, though. We want to be able to. I want to be able to Google Cat Temp and back in the day it was the white yellow pages. Find yeah. your phone number. Now it's just it's just Google, you know, but or do, Facebook. But do they like go and do they save your 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 naughty pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can't say what any one person does. Mm -hmm. I know that, that um, let's take that Snowden guy. That was a unique incident mm -hmm. on what he was um, faced with discovering. As far as do they, everybody has an audio picture, so it's not a big deal, you know? No. Oh, and then the people who do, how do I want to say this? There are flags for everything. Yeah. There are flags for everything. And, and those flags, when noticed, you know, somebody's supposed to act upon them. Whether they l let it go some time before they do or whether they act immediately that's generally up to that um whoever's in charge of that detail and how mm -hmm. that works uh our, our job was just literally going when i was in the mill i could can we tap that yes mm -hmm. can you tap that can we listen in yes yeah you know and it's very you know it's electronics it's very easy to do you listen in you ever get anything good yeah oh yeah i heard a girl guy break up with his well <laughs> 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 we were just you know just just doing some tasks i was like wait a minute go back to the conversation <laughs> and then he was like i'm gonna tell her so he was telling his girlfriend how he was gonna tell his wife and then <laughs> like she was like well you're gonna tell her i got her on the line so we was like oh shit this is my nicole time <laughs> like oh his wife is fighting out right now oh shit so then we were like in the phone closet just listening like oh my god this is hilarious <laughs> his life is about to be in shambles <laughs> so uh, the game we started playing was who, who is it <laughs> so you know because you know we listen to the voices a huge building well let's go sit outside right before lunch starts and see who look, comes out looking the worst <laughs> losing your wife and your girlfriend and your girlfriend at the phone same call. time <laughs> no because that's who, okay Hey, guess what, baby? She left me, so now you go to your girlfriend. Or you say, yeah. hey, baby, guess what? I left her, and you go back to your wife. At the same time, you have nowhere to turn. Yeah. Now that's somebody who starts doing crack. Yeah. yeah. And it's they, over now. And they start going to brunch together. Oh, my God. That, they become friends because they have a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I mean, that, that happens all the time. Like, yeah, yeah he's an asshole. You're better off. Yeah, he is, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, and then he's just They're sitting good friends. Up. What did he say to you? No, he, he said that same thing to me. Like, oh, shit. That's the thing I'd be like, dude. And the funny thing is, successful people, the thing about successful people is uh, 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 they do the same thing over and over and over again. It's, a, it's con con consistency. What's the word? Consistency. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see my C, C words today. Consist consi con Sesame Street. <laughs> consistency. <Yeah. laughs> Crushed it. Yeah, Sesame Street. <laughs> so, you know, that's the thing about it. Uh, most successful people say so they do the same thing everywhere. So somebody's successful at cheating, yeah. they tend to be saying the same thing to everybody, which is how they get caught up. It's like, if you want to be a successful cheater, do something different. Mm. You know, take this one to plays. Take this one to the movies. Mm. Take this one to the baseball games. And I guarantee you, none of the three will ever meet because you're taking them to different worlds. But then you have to have different worlds to take them to. The only people who can successfully cheat to me are people who have money. Yeah. People who are poor are just wasting time. They just <laughs> <laughs> they go get into a fight eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all go be at the same Walmart. <laughs> Cheating at a Walmart. <laughs> I do love the show, Cheaters. <laughs> it's like it's never as by the time that they sign up for it it's you don't need cheaters no, no. Sure no. <laughs> they go in the beginning they're like i don't no. know yeah, there's like, never been an ending like well he's a really good guy yeah <laughs> in the beginning she's like i think he's cheating because yeah. like i only see him for like 15 minutes a week and you like he, <laughs> and like he you know he's never let me over his house <laughs> i've never seen <laughs> but it. he says it's because it's messy and like he likes he respects me too much to like go to his house and he wants to make it easier by coming to my house he's usually over at like three in the morning and his, his phone's like always going off and he's always on his phone and there's this other woman who calls him baby but he says it's his mom but yeah but yeah but i also heard him say earlier that she was dead do you think he's cheating and like he's got a wife and kids at home and then she needs the video proof it's like you this is not a winning situation for you you knew this is you think that people know a lot yeah, they know. You have to because the whatever when you get away with a small thing, you get away with okay, you fuck someone at a bar, mm -hmm. you do that, and then you get away with like oh like one of your female friends like oh she's kind of you fuck her once, you do it again, you again. The more you get away with, the more it escalates. That's the more true. careless you get. That's true. 
That's true. That's that slippery slope. That's the gateway drug. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cheating is the gateway drug. Yeah. That's what it is because it's like, hey, I didn't get caught. So now it's more or less like, hey, it's uh, sneaking. And it's mm-hmm. just that feeling of, hey, that's something I got away with. Something I got away with. Mm-hmm. And then, you know. Next thing you know, there's cameras in your face yeah, at you're Walmart. In that <laughs> <laughs> you're in that pit and you can't get out. You're like, hey, baby, wait, wait, wait. Hey, baby, wait. What are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you going to put me on TV like this? Fuck off. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I was, it's hard, man. I, I, I you, you've been married for a while now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't twice. know. Twice. Twice. Yeah. The first one didn't work out. I nah, guess. No. No. I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm, I'm a regular. I'm a, I'm a square when it comes to that kind of stuff. Cheating is too hard, man. Yeah. You, I don't even understand how you do it, cause, like now, I'm, you know, you, I, how do you be in three places at once? You know, that's just impossible to me. Yeah. It's like okay, I really. You saw it today. Like okay, I'm slowly, methodically getting to where I have to go. Ain't nobody waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody waiting for me to come over. I'll, I'll see you at 10, and I'll see you at 12, and I'll see you at 3. In the, no, ain't nobody waiting for that. Yeah. In my life, you know, I'm not that, I'm not, well, I'm successful, but not at that. Yeah. I just don't, it's too hard, man. It's too hard to keep all that stuff straight. I'd rather be like, if you're going to, to me, there's nothing wrong with being a bachelor, uh, male or female there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with a oh, bachelorette there's nothing wrong with dating and and saying okay you know i see multiple people whatever yeah. that involves just i think just be honest and upright with that those people in the beginning and then people know what they're you know coming in on just like yeah. i'm a free agent you know yeah. i'm playing ball <laughs> but i'm like i'm gonna play for this team this week i'm gonna do a 10-day contract over here this week <laughs> why because i got those skills right i want yeah. whoever's gonna get me the championship yeah. That's what it boils down to. Like David Justice. Remember him? Oh, he played for everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got rings galore. <laughs> <laughs> and he got messed up with Halle Berry because he cheated. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn, David. And and that's the thing. Like, uh, No one's got a gun to anyone's head like you need to be monogamous. Like, yeah. It's yeah. 2017 now. Exactly. Like, with the, this fucking internet, there's all these apps specifically for that. Like, exactly. No one's saying like, but if you if you go into a relationship, like, yeah. hey, it's just me and you. Now you're just a dickhead. Yeah. 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 Especially if that's not your vibe. To me, the whole thing, like, like being married, like, like I did get married again. Oh, I am married now. Mm-hmm. And I like it because this is what I think about it. Like being married or being in a monogamous relationship is the unnatural. That's the thing that's supernatural where you go like, okay, I'm with you. You're with me. I know you could be with other people. You assume I could be with other people. Because <laughs> my wife is much more attractive than I am. So She's I very know, beautiful I know she can. I fuck up. It's over. It's yeah. right. she, really? Okay, guess what? It's just call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, trust me. So, <laughs> I said that to say. So for us to say, okay, we're going to deny ourselves uh, urges, yeah. you know, then the that, that's the supernatural thing where you go, okay, we're going to, Deny this on the, from the outside and then share this with one another. And then this is how you get three, you know, four kids at three years apart and stuff like that. The natural thing is to be with multiple people. Oh, yeah. Because it's it's that, you know, we are sexual beings. That's what we do. We reproduce. That's that's how we go on. But also you have the fact that we're human beings within that. So, hey, I'm attracted to this person. I want to spend time with them. If, and spending time with them, if it leads to that copulation, then awesome. And if it doesn't, no worries. Mm-hmm. The problem with all of that is just like drugs and everything else, copulation, copulence has become a problem. You know, uh, pornography in and of itself to me is not ill. It can get crazy. That's just not my bag. I think when you, only thing I think it gets off is when you have people in it that don't know they're in it. Other than that, it's on the table because as long as human beings have been on the planet, they've been trying to stick that one thing into the, every hole and try to figure out what's the best part of it all so to deny how did they say the matrix to deny ourselves that is to deny us the very thing that makes us human and we have to learn being human is controlling those urges and and re- recognizing those urges controlling those urges also giving into them at times if you can yeah what's wrong with that it's called the life experience yeah you know I mean, how else do you get get experience by being it you have a you know he, you just have a beautiful family and a nice little house and i always used to enjoy <laughs> hanging out hanging out there until that one time i took that wrong turn after dark oh <laughs> man i was i was like where are she's like these guys in the van help me I was like, those were cops <laughs> they were they were i was sitting there and I, my gps not working and it was just i was just seeing all kinds of shit i like went the complete wrong way and so i uh did what any little white girl would do in that situation. I just pulled over and started to sob. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you, man? Because like, I'll get you home. She was like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I was like, okay, cool. And if uh, you know Kat, so as you learn Kat, you'll learn she ha- she's, 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 
she's become tempered in her <laughs> age. Because <laughs> before she was like, ah! yeah. party bro. I was like, what? What the fuck? She's like, I'm got it. I'm gone. I'll be out. I was yeah. like, okay, be safe. So uh, she called me like the next day. She's like, these guys in the van, help me get there. I was like, oh, you went down the hill. I said, that's a heavy drug spot. Yeah. So they were in the van. Those were jump outs. They were, they were <laughs> cops. So, yeah, so uh, these guys in the van pulled up next to me. And I'm just sitting there, and then they're like telling me to roll down my window, and I'm thinking I'm gonna get shot in the face. <laughs> and, then, and then he showed me his badge and stuff, and he was like, "What's?" He was like, "What are you doing here? Yeah. You don't belong here." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "I don't know where I'm going. And I don't know what I'm doing." Yeah. And, and he just—they didn't just say anything. This is what you call white privilege. <laughs> they didn't say anything to me. They didn't ask to search any of my stuff. They didn't breathalyze me. They didn't do anything. They were like where are you trying to go? And I'm like, I'm trying to go to Arlington, Virginia. <laughs> and like, and they, so they like literally had allowed me to follow their van uh, all the way to the exit where I needed to go. And the whole time I'm just like shaking, <laughs> freaking out. I mean. Well, they know you're not there to buy drugs. No. Because if you were, you wouldn't be shaking. <laughs> you didn't know, they know that. They're like, mm, she's yeah. not here to pick up. She's not. Okay. You're an, you're an anomaly. That yeah. late at night. You know? yeah. And you need a little bit more black on your eyes than yeah. you were looking for drugs and not the car you had at the time. <laughs> yeah, my I was sitting there in my like my like Ford focus. Like, <laughs> like this who she visited. <laughs> just having a, just have like a mental breakdown yeah. in the front seat. She was a tutor who got lost. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to help someone with their homework yeah. and now I think I'm gonna die. I tell all my friends that because we live in we live in southeast uh, Washington, DC. It's a it's a nice neighborhood. Uh not far from Capitol Hill. But we're on the other side of the bridge in is Anacostia and uh, Congress Heights and whatnot, Marion Berry's own neighborhood, which is still, you know, coming up. It's, it's getting better. As I like to say about it, winter is coming to our neighborhood. We do have White Walkers now, like the rest of the town. <laughs> so, um, but at the time, it was, uh, actually, you came right when they were really flipping it, and that block, they were really... When we just moved in, they were shutting down whatever activities were going on right before we moved in because people on the block were letting us know that you guys moved in at the right time. Yeah. yeah. Like there was always a cop across the street. There was always a couple cops up the street. The van was over there. So they were really <laughs> like getting rid of the ill behavior that was happening in, in the neighborhood. I, t I fell asleep on the train in D.C. once, <laughs> and I woke up. This is more white privilege. I woke up in Anacostia, mm. and there was no more trains back. And there's no cabs. No, I mean, this was there. this was before Uber, like this was before like Uber or whatever. And I called nine one one. I was scared. <laughs> it was very late at night. People were like talking to me and like you know hitting on me and like everybody was clearly on drugs that was out yeah. at the dark at that yeah. time. And eventually, but somehow I, I, there was a cab. And like it was one cab, and I was like, "This doesn't happen. This saved my life." But I called nine one one, and they were very much like, "What do you want us to do for you? <laughs> we don't give girls rides yeah. home because like this." We don't do like, that anymore. I was like, "Can't tell that person." And I was very, what's the word, entitled. <laughs> yeah, privilege. Privilege yeah. is good. I mean, I know it. I know I got it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> That's why I don't mind hanging with. How many times did we get pulled over? We didn't get pulled over. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Whenever I was sitting in the front seat, yeah. whenever we got pulled over, it was no, it was no issue. We're like, well, we got pulled over. They'd be like, no, we're not. You all right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you guys be safe getting out of here. <laughs> Thank you, cat. Yeah. Whenever That's I was my sitting, girl. <laughs> sitting in the front seat, it was no problem. Yeah, all right, we're just trying to get back to DC. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, hey. use that voice, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey. Whenever, yeah, whenever. This is my friend. This is my best friend, Haywood, <laughs> and he's giving me a ride. Yeah. And then they would realize, like, if we weren't together, they're like, oh, this is just a black man and a white man. When we're home? Oh, go, go. <laughs> you guys, we're going to escorts. No <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, just, I don't know. I mean, I would get myself in some situations, though. Yeah. Because I just, I mean. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would just be like, what am I, I'd wake yeah. up and be like, why am I, what did he do that for? Yeah. I'll I be picked like, her up on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> like, I did. Please, please. I'm like, all right, I'm on yeah. the way. <laughs> like, this is bad. I'm like, bad. Yeah, like, these I'm, guys are, I'm like, no, dudes. This is my friend. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she good. She good. I know. I would, I, just, <laughs> I would just want to party. Yeah. And anybody who wanted to party, I'd be like, cool, I'm invited to the party. So innocent. And then <laughs> it would be different <laughs> sometimes than I expected it to be. It would be uh, so, much different. It's a borderline miracle you're still here today. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It is. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 She made us her besties. Yeah. Me, it's me, America, <laughs> California. We like all know each other. Yeah. <laughs> all the besties are like, hey, we can't catch bodyguard slash besties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, I need that because I just, I don't. I mean, now I'm I'm so I don't know if I've changed as a person or if I just made myself so busy mm. that I've really limited my ability to get into too much trouble. But like you know, in DC, I was working at you know like two to ten p.m. and yeah. doing comedy. Yeah. And you do comedy, and like when you start out, you get paid in alcohol. Yep. That's really how you get yep. paid. They're like they don't pay you, but they're like free drinks, yeah. two drink minimum. Yep. And I was just like, you go to drink tickets. I'd be like let's do <laughs> shots, let's do shots. <laughs> then I'm like, I can't drive home. No. I'm, I don't want to do that. I was a bad enough driver as it was. <laughs> another, another white privilege thing. Dupont Circle, that roundabout. Yeah. I still don't understand that roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know. You need to know so far in advance yeah. where you're going. I remember one time I was just trying to get to Panera Bread, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like driving around in circles being honked at and a cop pulled me over and he was like you just broke like 15 laws <laughs> but he just was like you have no idea what what you what you're doing do you and i said no i'm really embarrassed mm. <laughs> i mm. said i was embarrassed and he let me go do you think that would happen to you if no. you said <laughs> if you said you were embarrassed i better figure it out <laughs> <laughs> embarrassed about you about to be embarrassed bro <laughs> be embarrassed <laughs> <Chick -chick -chow. laughs> i mean I no don't how how is how is everything in DC? It's good. good. It's How's good right now. I mean, all things considered, uh, and I say all things considered because you know we have the the, the change in uh, office, which is 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 preeminent. It's coming up this week, actually. Coming yeah. up this week is going to happen. The change of power. But for us DC residents, nothing really changes other than you know just a new administration. It doesn't change how we live. You know, right. as far as for us now. Honestly, what we see is because Obama brought so many people to the city, you know, so many people wanted to be a part of that change. And what Trump did or his uh, his his um, transition team was they're not keeping any of those people or because, um, you know, usually keep it yeah. for like six months to a year. So all the different agencies so that the, the transition is smooth. They keep the people in those positions and then they swap them out bit by bit. But now they're not keeping anybody. So you have an influx of people who came in eight years ago who are now suddenly unemployed. Yeah. So if they don't stay, they go home. So you have one of those two things. You have people who bought homes who may have to sell, which puts DC back where it was. Or you have people who now have homes and have to look for other jobs. And what are they going to do? I'd say DC 70, 65 to 70% of people work for the federal government in some capacity mm -hmm. uh, between DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So you have those people now, you know, they say, they, they, uh, they, how do I want to say, they, they, those are the people who are really upset about the election. Like, hey, well, right. you know, we voted for change and this guy's coming in and not, this is the change that we didn't vote for, you know? Yeah. Like, so what are we supposed to do now? Now suddenly they're unemployed. They're like, what are we supposed to do? And it's like, okay, well, we've been here before. I'm not going to say figure it out, but you know, now what do you really want to do? You can still... The fact now become those lobbyists right and lobby the politicians in your favor the, the republicans are still going to take money they still yeah. need it so now <clears throat> that's my response to my friends like hey okay why don't you go work for those lobbies go work go work for those big farmers and cut them down so go work for those corporations that actually have the voices and swing it in the direction you want it swung you know and i like to see it go a little bit more center i'm not my mindset is totally left. That's where I live, but I do understand that everybody doesn't think that way. So you mm -hmm. do have to have moderation. Moderation is key. Mm -hmm. So that's those, I'm like, you now as a lobbyist have to work in those positions with the people who are lobbying against you. That's what they did. That's how they, that's how, that's how they got your job. They came in and lobbied the politicians to think for them. So now you need to do the same thing on that side. So that's on in the grand scheme of things. That's where DC is right now. And the change is like, okay, uh, comedy scene is great because of it so thank yeah. you <laughs> i think a lot of people though they don't think about stuff like that they'd rather just like scream in the streets that they're upset well yeah because that's the that's the that's the common response and that's what mm -hmm. we talk about with riots we go mm -hmm. well okay now what what do you, now, that, <laughs> now that we know you're upset it's just like you know and i i, I, I you know i don't mind crying be upset this is why again we go back to sesame street <laughs> now that you've expressed that what would you like to do about it because right. now you told me how, you, it's just expressing your feelings. It's out. Great. What do you want to do with that energy? Do you let it, do you just go? Some, personally, I say, 
go back to where you're from and make the change in the place where you're actually from because those are the places where grassroots movements need to be organized. organized. And then at the same time, if you don't want to go back to that place where you're from for whatever reason, then do the same thing here. Again, jo- now again, join these lobbying groups and firms, K Street, that's what, the, that's what it's known for, and and put it in the favor of the people. That's all. It's only. It's, it's not that many options. There's, there's, or quit and you know don't do anything. Go teach, <laughs> you know, yeah. which is also good because you also edu- My thing is, let something good come of all of this. Yeah. You know, you, you, and there's no way you didn't think Republicans are going to win again. You just wanted it to be a moderate Republican. Didn't mm-hmm. happen. No, I we mean, Trump, like to see moderate people. <laughs> Trump is, I mean, I don't even know if he's Republican, if he's no, Democrat. Fuck. He's just kind of like, <laughs> he's kind of just having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't think he wanted to win. I no. think he, he's probably. He didn't think he would. No. It's rigged. Yeah. He was like, it's rigged, people. It's rigged. And it was like, okay, people won't vote because it's rigged. Oh, shit. They voted. The biggest oh shit I saw was when he sat at the White House with Obama. <laughs> like, this is real. <laughs> like, yeah. no, I have to. We know what he, we know his track record, although his hotels are nice. Um, his we know his track record with his casinos and his hotels and even the, um, was it the Miss U- Universe pageant? Yeah. yeah, these things don't necessarily earn quite well. <laughs> so, <laughs> as a businessman, when I look at it, I go, "Well, if you are a businessman and America is a business, are you going to help us? Or are you going to hurt us?" Yeah, his track record has been to hurt his businesses. Now, do we want that for the people? But these are people now. Uh, uh, go back. If you, you didn't like it, and let's say you work in the transportation department and, and you, you, you saw the inner workings of government, take that knowledge, go home, rough office, and make a change. It can, it's going to happen all over again because the, the pendulum is going to swing back to the left, but we don't want it to swing back so crazy where they're like, hey, abolish every goddamn thing and start over. No, 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 we don't want to do that either. We just want a nice, healthy government. I want you to pick up my trash and police us as need be, and when I say as need be, I don't want Russia knocking on my door going, yeah. hey, we, we got beef with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just me? Just you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that press conference when he was like, Russia, he's like, yeah, Putin, he should not have done that. <laughs> like, what, is, what is happening right now? Well, that's I mean, the part was crazy pills. Yeah. Where I'm like, and I'm old, I'm old enough to remember Reagan era when the Russians were the enemy. You know, I'm old enough to remember Rocky IV, right? When Ivan Drago came in, this is who we were up against. Every movie, American Ninja or, or Kickboxer, or what have you, they were fighting the Russians in some way, shape, of Iron Eagle. Mm-hmm. All these different things. It was just like, hey, th- that's our biggest enemy now. Now, they're a huge ally. Is that what we want to say? Well, now I remember when John McCain was running against Obama, he was like, Russia is not what we think they are. Mm-hmm. He was saying that they're still the enemy, a sleeping giant. So now, with, uh, I'm like, is this what they mean when they say politicians need to know more? Somebody like Trump is like, oh, it's okay. Not necessarily, because what they're doing in Europe is not cool for the European. What they're doing in the Ukraine is not cool. How they want to take back parts of what they consider Russia, that's not cool. Those people voted for sovereignty, you know, so that has to stand. The uh, 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 the European Union and all of that good stuff, I mean, I'm not, I understand their positions, but what I don't understand is his position against them. You know, that's all I'm like, well, I'm like, how, how did they become the enemy? When, you know, I know people from England on a regular basis. What did, what mm-hmm. is going on? Yeah. It was, what's the shell game being played? Okay. Well, right now it just looks like, like you were saying earlier, no rich white guy is going to straight up come out and go, hey, yeah, I want to stay rich and white. Yeah. Um, but that's what it is. You know, it's people trying to find out new ways because they're new economies and people are trying to figure out how to make money off these new economies. One of the things Obama did was green energy. He really was serious about attacking green energy and, not attacking it, but enacting it and making it something that could be profitable for the nation. These these uh, uh, rooftop gardens and things in Detroit about yeah. trying to, you know, uh, urban farms and mm-hmm. stuff and community gardens and whatnot. These are things that help, not, one, they help the environment. Two, they help people, uh, uh, the, the economy, because people now are, have jobs and are, are learning and earning again. And then uh, on the, on the, uh, it helps uh, uh, build at the end of the day, America was agricultural in its beginning. So it gets it back to literally gets you back to your roots of what was America good at? Well, it was fertile ground. It was fertile land. It was a place where you, and you could grow anything, you know? So 
We're gonna grow hotels now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iron Castle. We're gonna grow hotels like and Iron and Iron <clears throat> Castles. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to the inauguration. Yeah. This weekend, and it's I, I, like you have I, to. I have to, <laughs> and I just I don't know what I'm gonna see. I mean, there's no. I feel like there's no middle ground with this election. There's either people that are like the whole world is over, mm -hmm. it's ending, mm -hmm. it's done. If mm -hmm. you talk about anything else besides how Donald Trump is Hitler, then you are personally <laughs> also destroying the country. Or people that are like. It's all f anything bad about him is fake news, and it's yeah. the mainstream media attacking, and and he's Donald Trump is a savior for this country, and it's like the <laughs> president also. I mean, can only do so much. Right. I mean, it's really. I mean, and I don't think he wants to do. I mean, he's hiring these people. I, I, his I, family. He, yeah, his family. <laughs> he just. He. I think he just. He loves the part where he stands up and he gives a speech yeah. and he talks yeah. and people listen to him. Yeah. I mean, I think that part's pretty, pretty He's the fun. emperor with no clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, at the end of the day right now, he is the emperor with no clothes. He has no policies, mm -hmm. no position. He's just like, hey, I just don't like them. <laughs> you don't like them, right? <laughs> you don't like them. We Now, we don't like them. Who are they? People we're going to keep out and they're going to build a wall to pay for it. Who's going to build a wall? <laughs> How many Mexicans are going to build a wall to keep out Mexicans? <laughs> yeah. I ain't building no wall. <laughs> you can't do that to a country. Yeah. You just can't do that to it. Like, hey, China so tried it, right? Yeah. They built the Great Wall. <laughs> yeah. But it's the thing is, is he made everything very simple. Yes. Like he's like, yeah. make America yes. great again. Yes. Uh, oh, immigration. We're just gonna get to build a wall. Yes. Mexico's gonna pay for yes. it. We're gonna keep them out, yes. folks. You know, those are bad people. Look, I've yes. got good people. I've got good people. <laughs> yes. China's bad. Make America great. Huh. People are like, oh. And then all the other like GOP nominees were like talking about you know number like actual like yeah. policy, yeah. which starts to get boring. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's what that was my problem with the with the turnout. I go, okay, wait a minute. I watched both sides. I, I, at this. I, 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 through this election, I chose to become a Democrat. I live in D.C., and that's the only way you can actually make any real changes. You can't be an independent. The only way I could vote in the uh, in the primaries was to be registered as a Democrat. So the only way I could vote for the people I wanted to see was to register. So I debated Democrat or Republican, Democrat or Republican, Democrat or Republican. Why? Because I just see them as two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So as I'm watching the Republicans and their primaries, I'm like, they, these, they're not listening to the people they need to be listening to. I mean, like, there's some real people up there talking and making some sense, and you're not listening to them. How are you not listening to these people who are making sense? You're listening to this guy who's going, no, who's cussing everybody out. I mean, it's, it's a reality show. He turned it into The Apprentice. Yeah, well, and then, but it was funny to watch him in the debate and have him, you know, sit, make fun of Rosie O'Donnell, who really got mad at me this What's weekend. She, oh, yeah, Tracy, let me ask you about that. What'd yeah. you do to her? I t okay, so I was talking about how she wants to have martial law to stop Trump, which yeah. martial law, when we just start getting shot and stuff, yeah, that's like not that? what I want to do. You martial law to stop Trump? Well, apparently she thinks we have her Twitter account. Like, I mean, she just suggested it. So I made fun that's of her. called rioting. Yeah, I made fun of her. On, <laughs> I made fun of her on Fox and Friends, and I told oh. <laughs> I told her to relax, take some deep breaths, maybe take a bath. And then I tweeted that I told her to take a bath. She was very upset that I told her to take a bath. Yeah. It was apparently a very sensitive yeah. issue for her. <laughs> so she tweeted at me repeatedly being like, I'm so disappointed I in know. you. I saw. And I just kept being like, I loved your work in A League of Their Own. <laughs> Great job in Harriet the Spy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. I also said, look, like, and she kept being like, I don't even know who these four people on Fox News are. It's like, you're very famous. Congrats. Uh, but like that doesn't mean you can summon the military from your Twitter account. Like that's like a special kind of delusion. I mean, and and like she spent all day tweeting at me. It makes sense why I would be tweeting at her all day. Yeah. It makes sense because yes, she is very famous. Yeah. She's a very famous person. And this, I got three thousand followers that day. So well, it, makes way, it makes sense. You make sense. Hopefully, I would love to uh, one day even maybe sail past uh, Rosie. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> but it's like, coming. <laughs> what is going on in her life? Nothing. Where what she's <laughs> what she's doing is she's responding not only to me but all the trolls being like you're fat. Like she's responding to them, yeah. and I'm like, you got nothing going on all day. And then she followed me. She did. And then she blocked me. Huh? Power move. She followed me to block you. But that doesn't make sense. She followed me. And I was like, is she trying to, does she want me to slide into the DMs? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah. And then a few hours later, she blocked me. And then she blocked a lot of people who I know, like, through work, just just cause, just yeah. to block them, too. But she's just yelling all the time, which isn't really the best way. I mean, right. I understand being mad. Right. I yell a lot. <laughs> um, but, like, I, I, I don't, that's not a, the best way 
whenever I've been in an argument with like a guy, mm-hmm. I've never convinced him by yelling in his face the loudest. And, <laughs> like that's not how you do it. Um, you know, you get yeah. a, you gotta talk about it, or until you yeah. get until you get so annoying to them that they just tell you you're right. <laughs> point. I can be very annoying. Good point. I can be an incredibly annoying person. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's that's not a bad way to approach politics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> annoying. Like, pick pick at everything that. Okay, I'm gonna pick at this, pick at this, pick at this. Not just not picketing with picket signs, but pick at it. Like just nar- um, narrowly pick down every the positions and go. Okay, that that makes no sense. That makes no sense. And then at some point, people say, "Well, what do you have to say?" And then that's how policies are enacted. Because at the end of the day, we're asking. Here's what we're asking. We're not asking people to parent us. We're right. asking people to go, okay, there are things that we don't see. I don't know what goes on in New York City on a re- regular basis. But there's people who are able to see those things and say, this is how what happens in NYC affects you in D.C. Something like tax on trains. Or something like the, 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 the hell, tax on soda in Pennsylvania now and stuff like that. Though there are people who are supposed to should watch. This is what politicians, in my opinion, should do. Watch those things and regulate those things. But now politis- politics in America, and we have America to thank for it, has become a career. And not just a career, but also a way to keep yourself el- make, make yourself elite mm-hmm. and then keep yourself elite because of uh, uh, the funding that goes into it and all that kind of stuff. Those are the things that I, we, I don't know if they'll ever get out of politics. We say that they should. We hope that they would. But what we do hope comes uh, from something like this. It's some civility. <laughs> People ask me, they say, well, do you consider everybody who voted for Trump a racist? Yes, I do. Here's why. You, race was his, 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 his platform. We can't avoid it. We can't say it wasn't. His platform was, I, I, we hate those people. Mm-hmm. That's it. It was, we hate those people, we want to keep those people out. It was religious intolerance, and it was racial intolerance. Or we won't even say racial, because it, we, people get confused when they think racial is black or white. It's cultural intolerance. More than anything else, we don't want those people here. They're coming here, they're taking jobs, this, that, and the third. When you do that, you, uh, it's like Bruce Springsteen said it. It's, it unleashed a, a, a weird genie. And there's no putting that genie back in the bottle because we have one group of people who feel ostracized, and you have another group of people pointing the finger. No one wins because eventually that finger comes back at you and it's a, a, a broken hook. So I said it to say, is it race? There are people who didn't want to give up their position. The rich white male, and that's what Trump represents in this country. We, we have to understand the country was founded by rich white landowners for rich white male landowners. It wasn't founded for you or for me or for you even. Right. You know what I mean? It was founded for those of them who would go, uh, uh, okay, if you're not in this group of these original 13, then guess what? You didn't sign this Declaration of Independence. We care about you because you live on our block, but guess what? You eat off of us. So that being said, it has to, America has an opportunity, and Ma- Malcolm X said this years ago, for a bloodless revolution. It's, a, it's one of those unique countries because of its youth and because of its uh, uh, newness, so to speak, and because of its power position, where it can change all of that. You know, uh, the election of Obama, just on, just in theory, just to look at it, changed everything. He still went after bin Laden. He still... Uh, uh, yeah, he was just drone striking all over the place. Like a <laughs> right? I mean, he had more drone strikes than anybody else. But it's funny because we don't factor in that now that droning, the ability to drone has increased since he became an Yeah, office. it was like Washington had zero drones. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 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 Was, that wasn't did. by choice. Yeah, yeah. he could have did that shit. Like, if I could do that for the British from here, hell, yeah. if he could have dropped a nigga on the British, he would. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I Drop think five niggas over there. Yeah. Watch <laughs> I think Thomas Jefferson said that. <laughs> <laughs> While he was reading his Quran. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 we can't, you know, we, you know, we can't be so, this is what I mean when I say those people who are now, who are teenage drug users who go, no, I don't think that's the way, man. Come on, dude, you, come, don't do that. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. be a hypocrite, which is, that's what, that's the biggest problem for, for uh, uh, change. That's the biggest block is hypocrisy. And uh, uh, Trump, he, I don't think he's a hypocrite. He said what he meant and meant what he said. <laughs> he's just about money. But he said years ago, whatever I needed to do, if I was to run for president, what I would do, I was rally my base. What I would need to do to rally my base. So if I'm looking at it from a sports perspective, somebody like Pat Riley, how he got the Knicks where they needed to be to play the Bulls. It was nothing like the Showtime Lakers. Same thing with the Heat. This is what they need to be in order to beat the Spurs. Nothing like the Knicks. So this is what a coach does. I see 
what I'm working with and use it to the best of its ability. So I'm actually fine with Trump. My problem is the people like the Paul Ryans and who were like anti him and they're like, no, he's our guy. Or the people like uh, friends of mine who are like, I'm going to vote that way because I'm, one, I'm a Republican. Two, I also think that too many people are coming to the country, da da da. But we know, we know this. But it's not just Hispanics. There are people who come from various, numerous cultures and countries. There are people who come from Canada who overstay their visas. Fucking Jim Carrey, Michael J. Fox, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drake. You know what yeah. I mean? When it comes to Canadians, it's a lot of people. Let's build a wall over there too. We're not talking about building a wall over Canada. So that, that's the hypocrisy that I see that go. We also have people who come from uh, uh, Asian countries and African countries and, and other countries who overstayed England. I know people who have had to go back because of visa stays. Yeah, so, me too. You know, like, well, damn. So let's get, if we're going to talk about immigration reform, let's talk about it seriously. Let's talk about America, say, for the original people who were here and the black people who were brought here, is a nation of immigrants. It is a nation of people who came here to better their stations in life. The other people who were originally here, they were just, they called it home. The black people who were brought here have made it a home. So in doing so, we, you have this unique structure that can be like, like England realized they had to have a House of Lords and a House of Commons. We already know that. We call it the Senate and we call it uh, 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 Congress. We know this. Oh, I guess Congress is the united body, but we call it the Senate and the House of Representatives. So we know that we need people to represent people because we're not hearing everybody's voice. But we also know that Okay, we know why the Electoral College was uh, in use and why it was used and how it helped to enable the slave states to count their slaves. Why is it not? It's also an enabling governors where they have huge prison populations to count those prisoners who don't get to vote. <laughs> so, okay. Now, let's, let's say now, let's just be real and be honest. Because you committed a crime, does that mean you lose your vote, your voice, and your right to vote in your state? And let's say you commit a crime. Let's say let's say while I'm here in New York City, the New York State, New York City says, okay, we want to keep you for whatever reason. Stop and frisk. We found something. I'm registered in D.C. Does that mean I still don't care about what's happening in D.C. to my friends and family? No. It's called when I was in the military. It was called absentee balloting. Yeah. So why not allow that? These, I mean, there there are things that can be changed that are very simple to me. That people go, oh, we got tradition, but it's America. Yeah. We, we ain't got no tradition yet. We don't even have a, a language that we consider American. You know, they, that's why, well, they shouldn't be speaking Spanish. Well, they can. There's no language here. There's no official language. There is no American. We all just speak English because that's what the people spoke. So that being said, there is no official anything other than flag and Star Spangled Banner. So as we create it and, and transition America to, if you want to put walls around America, then let's put these virtual walls and go, mm -hmm. hey, guess what, man? Okay, are you proud to be American? Do you like being an American? What do you like about being an American? Let's study other countries and cultures. Even in school to this day, we still study Europe and Russia. We don't study Asia and its whole. We don't study Southeast Asia. We don't study uh, 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 like shit like the Galapagos Islands or Australia or Africa at all. Throw those into the mix and then watch how America grows and blooms and blossoms and can be something like one of those empires, like the Ottoman Empire, that while some people were... In any, at, here's, the, here's the funny thing about it. Anybody up here, there's going to be somebody down here. So there's always going to be an empire, and there's always going to be a rebel faction. So you just hope that you're, as a parent, I just hope that the kids get why I do what I do. And that's kind of what I would like to see from our politicians, that we know that everything ain't going to be hunky-dory, but just help us understand why you do what you do. And then also, let's let's be really inclusive. Let's be honest. The, thing, the cool thing about the Obama um, administration was, seems to me that more people felt included in the process. Yeah. That's what you want. He didn't include me. <laughs> Why? Why do you feel he did? <laughs> Probably because I talked so many mean things about him on Fox News. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he didn't He didn't stop your ability to No, he certainly didn't. Say those things. No, I'm going to miss uh, Joe Biden, too. I mean, funny guy, man. Papa Joe. I mean, <laughs> funny. I, w I would like to do, like, have, like, four beers with him. Of course no, you would. He would want to have ice cream, though. <laughs> Big ice cream. Maybe be trying to kiss on your neck. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Like, I'd be like, ooh. Yeah, you know, Joe, you're like, eh, cat. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know? 
so is there anything else you want to get to? I think we're at like time. We've been talking. I didn't know your show. Like we usually stop at an hour, but yeah, uh, I didn't know there was an actual like hard time limit. Yeah, it's I the don't internet. Know. Like it's the internet. This is this is a twelve hour podcast yeah. featuring <laughs> Catherine Tim and Haywood Turnip Seed Junior. It's a marathon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. I mean, is there anything else you, you wanted to get to or talk about or uh, get to? I mean, like I, I, I'm glad I know now. But Rosie O'Donnell was upset with you because. Tracy told me, Tracy's my wife, people at home. She was like, hey, ask Kat about Rosie O'Donnell while Rosie O'Donnell was cussing out on Twitter. And I was like, what? So I went and looked and was like, what? Oh, my God. Rosie O'Donnell, what's wrong with you? She put a dash in between every word, too. Yeah, she was Wild. serious. She was like, oh. She did like one of these. Cat, I don't understand. <laughs> Take a bath. I was I'm like, ashamed of you. I yeah, was like, it's like, Ooh. geez, Rosie. I mean, I really did like League of Their Own. I really did. It's a good movie. I really did enjoy the film, and now I feel like it's a good movie. Fall, now I feel like she'll never talk to me about it. <laughs> She's one of the first stand ups I really actually seen live. Oh yeah. Yeah, I dig her. I dig her. She doesn't do stand up to me as much anymore because she got on that you know political tip. I mm -hmm. thought her show was great. Her TV show was really great. Yeah, but that poli yeah. I mean, everybody's on a political tip now, which I guess is good depending on how you're doing it. But you know, calling for the military and getting mad. I just said take a bath to relax. But that's that's a slippery slope because that becomes a coup. You know, and then when the military takes over, and right. then who do they sit in that position? What general? Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> no, no, no. General Rosie. I love her, but no, Rosie, no. You should keep getting along with Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> she could get along. You're in good standing. Yeah. She couldn't get along with Whoopi Goldberg, so for her to be talking about you, like, you're in good standing, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Whoopi, Go Whoopi Goldberg, she's been on The View forever. Yeah. She just keeps going Thank and God. going. She's an American treasure, man. <laughs> yeah. Something. She's yeah. something. I mean, best coach in Knicks history. Yeah, <laughs> Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anything I want to get to? If you're in DC, uh, come uh, check me do some comedy. I do a show at Madam's Organ every Monday, and a show at Sally's Tavern every first and third Tuesday. If you're in the DC area, come on through, and we'll make you laugh. I've had waka waka waka. <laughs> I've had wonderful times at both those places. We've had cat's birthday parties. I dressed up like Cookie Monster for cat's birthday <laughs> party. That's true. He did. <laughs> he did. It was a wonderful yeah, time. Because her birthday is the day before Halloween, so mm -hmm. we had a good time on Halloween. Oh, we had a really good time. Yeah. Everybody was there. We were all drinking. Oh man, I don't even. It was a show. Like not in the coup. <laughs> After all, it just became a show. It like, <laughs> yeah. Let's just drink and talk shit and roast. Yeah, yeah. And then it was not supposed to be a roast of me. It wasn't. But then it just turned into a roast of me, which I appreciated because it was still about me. Right. Yes. That's so all you care about. It really is. That is all. She cares. all right. At least she's honest about that. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's well, why I love her. Do you have any ads to read? No, I don't think today. I mean, oh, it's wow. it's too early, so I'll probably have to read it and then send it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. All right, Link. Link. <laughs>